What's up guys, it's Sergey from Crystal Freediving and this is my next video about freediving training for beginners. If you just finish your first level course or even second level course, this is a video for you. So on my last video I was talking about how to train dynamic apnea uh, for the beginners and today we're going to talk about how to train static apnea for the beginners. The principle is going to be more or less the same. If you haven't seen my previous video, check the description, there is going to be a link for this video. Before we start talking about static apnea, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to it. If you've already done it, thank you very much. Don't forget to click the bell button and then every time when I'm gonna make a new video about freediving, then you're gonna see some notification and then you're not gonna miss my new video, which is good. Okay, uh, on my previous video about dynamic apnea, I was talking that uh, your priority is not CO2 tolerance or low oxygen tolerance or lactic tolerance. No, this is a for the more advanced free divers. This is a more for uh, free divers who are already training for a while. In your case, if you're training dynamic, it is a technique and relaxation. So when we're talking about the static, the principle is the same. Uh, you don't need to train high level CO2. Tolerance. You don't need to train the low oxygen tolerance. You don't need to train these things. It is too early. Any other, as in any other sport, like freediving is based uh, on some simple main principles. And our main principle of freedivers is to stay relaxed, to do correctly relaxation breathing before your breath hold and to stay relaxed while you're holding your breath before contractions and after contractions and then do proper recovery so this is a this is a true for any breath hold doesn't matter it's dynamic static or it's depth relaxation breathing relaxation during the breath hold and correct recovery so this is what you're going to train and uh, when you are training static apnea with your body of course you never train alone don't forget the first rule in free diving never free dive alone never train alone especially in the pool don't listen to people who say that okay it's possible to train if you are not pushing your limits too much no 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 it's completely completely dangerous so don't follow these rules we don't want to make free diving dangerous right so train with your body so if you train it with your body uh, and today is a static day, maybe it's once per week, maybe it's a couple of times per week, depends how much you like static or how much you like other, other stuff. What are you going to do? You're going to do a series of breath holds, we call it tables. Don't be confused with the word tables. Um, there are some people who say, I don't like tables. The tables just mean the series of the breath holds, right? If you're going to do like six breath holds with some kind of recovery in between, this is a table. So for you, let's say it is your body, you're gonna do like six breath holds uh, and then your body is gonna do like six breath holds. Doesn't matter, it can be five or it can be seven, depends how much time you have. And during these breath holds, you're not gonna have any contractions, any urge to breathe. So for example, you do relaxation breathing for a couple of minutes, then you hold your breath until you feel uncomfortable, until you feel any urge to breathe and then you stop holding and you do recovery. Your body can check the time and maybe put some notes, but not letting you know what was the time because the time is not your priority. Your priority is just get as much relaxed as possible. And then you do second, uh, second breath hold, which is gonna be the same. You do relaxation breathing for a couple of minutes. You breathing, you try to get as much relaxed as possible. You do big breath in and then you hold your breath. Again, you're holding your breath until you start feeling uncomfortable. Maybe until the, your first attractions or if you have any other symptoms of urge to breathe until you have that. Okay, and then your body again checking the time without letting you know. And you're doing such breath holds like five, six times. And when you finish, then your body can tell you, okay, your first breath hold was one minute 30, another 140 next one to minute. So this is a good way to train your relaxation. Okay, you're holding your breath, you try to get as much relaxed as possible, you enjoy this breath hold because the feeling is nice, it's amazing, you like this kind of training, you're gonna like this kind of training and then you do safety for your body. So this is the beginning. The next what I'm gonna, uh, the next what I'm going to talk is about the classical CO2 table. There are a lot of critiques about the classical CO2 table, 
Uh, let's have a look at it. Okay, guys, this is a classical CO2 table. It's based on the time when the maximum time is two minutes. You're taking from your maximum time uh, 50%, you have one minute, and then you do a series of breath hold, one minute only, with a, uh, with a decrease in your relaxation time. So, for example, you've done one minute, then recovery time 145, one minute again for the breath hold, 130 recovery, one minute, 115, uh, one minute, one minute, etc., etc. And the last one, 30 seconds, or you can do you can do the last, sorry for the sound, you can do the last one is 15 seconds up to you. So what is the critique of this uh, CO2 table? There is a two things which people don't like. First, it's time consuming. So as you can see, it's going to be for a while before you finish. And if your breath hold is going to be not one minute, but maybe two minutes, then it's going to be even much longer. And then when you're training with your body, and I know that you know that you have to train with your free diving body, then you're going to do safety for him or for her and then it's going to be it's going to be quite long right so time consuming the second one despite that this is called uh, co2 high co2 tolerance table there's not that much high co2 right so when you do the first breath hold like maybe all of these breath hold is going to be quite easy breath holds right so it's going to be quite easy breath hold and maybe only last one, maybe last two is going to be slightly more difficult, right? And if it's going to be like the whole table is going to be easy, then you can increase the time or decrease your recovery time. There is two, uh, two ways how to make it hard. So let's think about this critique. Yeah, it's time consuming. I absolutely agree. Uh, it's, it's a little bit long. But if, even if you do this type of training and then your body is going to do it, the overall is it's going to be like, I don't know, like 40, 50 minutes. So it's not that much. And this is a, I think if you have a one, one hour of training, this is normal, uh, normal training session. Doesn't matter what you do. So another one that it's not really, uh, high level CO2 tolerance, right? Because you're not gonna produce that much CO2. Like recently I was participating in some kind of debate when uh, the question was, uh, is it CO2 table actually train, like give you a lot of CO2? And probably not. But if you are a beginner, I don't think that this is a waste of time. Why? So, for example, this five breath hold, they're not really difficult. They're probably gonna be quite easy. So what we're training here, we're training relaxation breathing, right? If you're a beginner, this is a skill. Everything is a skill and relaxation breathing, it's not coming natural. Like if you're just starting free diving, you, the relaxation breathing is not what you just get it. Like you're gonna, you need to practice it to make it better, right? So before, before every breath hold, you're gonna do relaxation breathing. And this is a good training, right? You do your relaxation breathing, you try to get as much relaxed as possible, you do big breath in and then you hold your breath. So your breath hold is going to be quite easy, but when you do your breath hold, you also train your relaxation. You do your breath hold, you know that the breath hold is going to be easy and during this one minute you try to get even more relaxed. You try to relax your muscles, you try to stop uh, thinking about uh, like some weird stuff, some random stuff. And then you do your recovery, and then you do um, like when you, then you do your recovery breathing, and then you do your relaxation breathing again, and repeat it. So I would say if you do like a classical CO2 table, when uh, the breath hold time is the same and recovery time is slightly uh, decreasing and decreasing, then yeah, I'm agreeing that it is not the best way to train high level of CO2 train, high high level of CO2 tolerance. But it is a good way to train your relaxation. This is why like, I do recommend for my beginner students to do this type of training, nothing wrong with it. If you're a high level athlete, probably you're not even watching my video, right? If you're watching your video, you're probably a beginner freediver who is looking for the advice. And this table, nothing wrong for it when you are just beginning your freediving training and you want to learn more about the basic of freediving, which is a relaxation. So relaxation is a basic, is a basis, uh, is a foundation of the free diving. If you're not relaxed, 
usually I'm saying for my students, if you're not relaxed, you're not doing free diving, you're doing something else.